All right, this is a continuation of introducing you to the multi-purpose coil designed pretty spooky. But this coil has um, other capabilities outside of being directly connected to the spooky, and that is um, we have designed a PEMF box, and that is a pulse um, electric magnetic field box or electronic magnetic field box and what it does is it pulses it pulses the um, coil with a huge huge um, uh, voltage spike that generates a huge magnetic pulse this particular box was designed after the Bob Beck pulser and I used a similar technique of a light bulb, although I painted this one black, to act as the current limiting resistor. And the reason being is, is that we have so much current running into the coil that um, the light bulb works out just fine. It can handle 100, uh, this particular light bulb can handle 60 watts and it can handle 110 volts and we're going to be pulsing that coil with about 100 volts, uh, which will generate many, many amps of current. The coil will, war will warm up. It will definitely get hot. And this light bulb costs 50 cents. To replace that light bulb with a high wattage, um, um, I think I'm using around a 20 ohm resistor. Uh, that's the equivalent resistance in the filament. Um, would probably cost anywhere from 10 to 25 dollars. So 50 cents versus uh, 10 dollars is a um, no contest for me. So I went with the light bulb. It was a very clever technique that Bob Beck came up with. Um, in the bottom of the box, I have the cover off so I can actually show the camera. And what it consists of, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to zoom in with your. Uh, um, video program is in this case I have five resistors and I have three extra ones I've disconnected these three here this this um, connection normally would be connected to this other bus bar and it's not because um, it actually drives the coil too much um, I have to uh, get a different uh, light bulb different light bulb styles 175 60 uh, and 40 watt, they all um, have different resistances and they um, act as current limiters. Um, what I actually need, I think, is a um, 40 watt refrigerator bowl, and then I can connect this up. There's a heat sink here with a real heavy duty SCR. This SCR can literally handle for a fraction of a second, um, a microsecond, it can handle up to 900 amps. I know that sounds unbelievably high, but that's what it's rated at. We're going to be passing about uh, 40 to 60 amps through that uh, SCR for a fraction of a second to energize the coil. Um, the rest of the circuit is nothing more than a bridge rectifier here. I full wave rectified the AC. I don't know if you can actually see it. Maybe if you blow it up, uh, your video will be able to see it. Um, the back side of the socket and a on off switch. The output is designed to take a 16 gauge um, extension cord wire or plug. Uh, the coil is made up of the, the PEMF part of the coil which is the 18 gauge wire connects to a 16 gauge wire so we have a wire that's capable of handling the, uh, the current that will be necessary to drive this. So with that, little write up, or not write up, but spiel, I'm going to connect the coils. First thing I'm going to do is plug it in, the PEMF, turn it off, it is off. plug it into a power source which is 
110 volts. Now, I had this adapter in previous videos to give me a means of connecting the 18 gauge portion of this coil, the 18 gauge, in this case it happens to be the green wire, um, to the spokey. But in this case, we don't need this anymore because we're not going to connect to the spooky. We're going to plug this 18, uh, the 16 gauge um, extension cord into the other end, the output, the output that will drive this coil from this PEMF um, Bob Beck lookalike uh, generator box. Okay, I'm just going to ignore this, the other co uh, wire. The, uh, I have no, I'm not going to be using that at all. I certainly can't pump the output uh, current capable of driving this 18-gauge uh, portion. Of the, I can't drive that little 24 hour. I'd cook that wire for sure. I'm going to turn on switch number one, and I'm going to turn on the PEMF box. Now, what you're seeing and hearing, maybe you can hear it in the camera, but you certainly can see the light flashing. These are magnetic pulses coming out of this, this coil. These are huge magnetic pulses. This is the pulser. If you look up PEMF on the internet, you will find many, many variations of this device. And you'll find them from homemade up to many thousands of dollars. This particular unit is under a hundred bucks. Um, it is mostly labor. Uh, granted that SCR is uh, probably the most expensive item in this box. Um, goes for roughly seven or eight dollars. And all the rest of the components are just really inexpensive. The box is um, these boxes, I bought a bunch of them, and I got a discount, and they were $7 a piece. Um, the light bulb, I already mentioned, is $50, uh, 50 cents. This socket here costs a buck uh, and 29 cents, I think. And the plug that uh, this socket plugs into, um, I think that was a buck. A couple of grommets to act as protectors for the cables coming in and out, got one on each end. You can see the grommet there, and you can see the grommet. And the switch was a dollar switch. So turn it off, and it no longer pulses. Turn it on, and it's pulsing. What do you use a PEMF device for? Um, you use it to send really huge magnetic pulses into the soft tissue of your body, and uh, or your bone, or your muscle, or whatever, to relieve pain, and it does many other things. Um, so you can use this on your animals, you can use it on yourself, you can do whatever your heart uh, desires with it. So you want to see the pulses, I'm sure you want to see the pulses. So if I turn this meter on, you're seeing it's pegging, and I'm, um, I'm well over, uh, I'm about two feet away, and you can see, oh, you can't see it, I have to aim it. <laughs> Well, I'm about two feet away now, and you can see I'm still pegging the meter. If we aim the magnetic flux at it, <laughs> I'm an arm's length away, and here's the coil. And now we're a good three feet away, and we're getting a uh, not full meter pegging situation anymore. By the way, this uh, meter uh, pegs out at 100 milligauss, if I didn't mention it in the previous videos. So that means when I start getting close while well, I'm pegging the meter now, I have no idea if I'm generating 100 milligauss or 200 milligauss. But the magnetic field increases with the square of the distance, or the inversion of the square of the distance. So as I get closer, it gets proportionately uh, stronger. I do not know how many gauze um, this coil is capable of delivering. 
But I would imagine that if you have it right next to you, you know, an inch or two away, we're probably generating at least uh, a gauze, if not way more. Um, I'm not quite sure how I, I can calculate it, but I'm not sure I would believe the calculations. I don't really know how I would measure it. So with that, this is an unbelievable adaptation of the original vortex coil that we designed um, to be used with the Spooky to replace um, the remotes on the Spooky because this, if I take out the core, I have to turn it on, off, now I have a place where I can put my fingernail clippings, rest them inside here. Um, if I, if you go back to previous videos, um, you can use this as not only a magnetic delivery device, but you can also use it as a scalar wave delivery device. And what you do is you set it up just like you would set the remote except that you're going to get probably, and again, I don't have absolute numbers, but you're probably going to get 10 or 20 times, maybe 100 times, um, the power out of this coil over and above what you would get out of the remote. I know, wow. So now I can turn it back on and we're still generating that magnetic field and you can see it's quite strong um, probably just a slight uh, it's um it's probably a based on the distance that i have here if you can see it, yeah i'm doing good based on the distance here i would guesstimate it we probably lost about a third of its uh strength without having the core in it this uh um light bulb is flashing uh, close to three hertz um, or three times a second. So we're getting roughly three pulses a second, uh, very huge magnetic pulses out of this coil. I wish I could turn around and do a much longer video about this. There's a lot of technical aspects that you can um, look up. It would be uh, good to understand the difference between a north face pulse and a south face pulse as I turn this around. South pace pulse are um, uh, considered possibly dangerous. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's going to cause you to go blind or anything. Um, I th I'm going to leave it to the reader unless I decide to start writing a book in my blog, next blog about this. Uh, why um, North is a better um, pulse to deal with. And that's why I put the amount of the wires on the south side of this uh, coil. So the north side could be placed against a sore wrist, uh, an elbow, and um, a thigh, a back, a chest pain, whatever. I don't recommend if you have a pacemaker that you get anywhere near this device. You might notice that I put those two laptops that I was using in previous videos way in the back. I don't recommend that uh, you get this anywhere near a hard drive while you're using this because it is sending out one intense magnetic field. Um, I wish I could say more about this. I've already said that. So here is um, a PMF coil, um, an adaptation of the Vortex coil design replacement that we came up for the spooky. So this is a PEMF coil. This is a remote uh, scalar wave generator. This is a, um, a dual channel um, RF um, magnifying coil, magnetic wave coil. It is really very multi-purposed. And uh, yes, I will build these. I built a uh, winder. I will make these coils for you, uh, for you people. Um, this is nothing more than labor. Um, the wire is just a moderate expense. But, um, it's all labor putting these coils together. I'm looking at selling these coils, if anybody's interested, for around $75. Um, 
that should include shipping. I should be able to turn around and uh, get a fair price uh, to cover the work that goes into this. Um, there will be technical aspects of this coil on my blog which will define how many windings are into it and so forth. So there's nothing from stopping you to build them yourself. But the problem that I had with several of the devices that I made, people say, well, can you make me one? Because they don't want to be winding these things and so forth. Or building electronics. Um, this I'll make. And I'll make the PEMF box. And I'm thinking that, again, it's a labor-intensive, it's not a cost-intensive device. Um, I'm thinking about the same price, about $75 for um, uh, the labor and the parts will be covered in that. And I should be able to ship this also for about the same price. Um, the light bulb could be a little bit touchy um, because it's fragile. Uh, I might have to use a bigger box. I'll figure that out later. So... To answer questions, will we make one? Yes. Uh, this time I'm going to say yes, absolutely yes. I've made a half a dozen of these coils already. I've made a couple of these boxes, and I have materials to make a half a dozen more. And if I get um, more requests than what I have materials for, I'll just order more materials. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I still haven't touched all the facets of uh, use at this coil can uh, be used for and those will be for other videos uh, I want to get uh, the basics out to um, the spooky group and to the internet at large so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed uh, this little presentation